Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with 7-Minute Salmon Piccata. That's right, in just a few minutes, with only a couple ingredients, using just one pan, we are going to make an incredible dish featuring one of the world's great pan sauces. And whether you're an expert cook or just getting started, this is one recipe slash technique that you must master. And the good news is it could not be simpler. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by seasoning two salmon fillets. And these were about six ounces each, which I think is a perfect portion. And yes, the bones and skin have been removed. And if they're not sold like that, have the person at the fish counter do it for you. Okay, they are more than happy to. And if they're not, tell them Chef John sent you. Oh, they'll know what that means. And what we'll do is sprinkle these with a mixture of kosher salt, freshly ground black pepper, and cayenne. And then once that's been seasoned, before we head to the stove, I'm going to sprinkle on a little bit of flour, and I mean just a little bit, which we will kind of rub in and pat on to make it nice and even. And that's going to help us form a very light crust on the surface when this gets sautéed in the butter, which is where we're headed next. And what we'll do is place a nonstick skillet over medium-high heat, and we will spoon in a tablespoon or two of clarified butter, which as you know is simply melted butter where we skim the foamy white stuff off the top, which is going to leave us with this beautiful golden pure butter fat. And once we've heated that on medium high for about three minutes, we'll go ahead and place in our salmon flour side down, at which point we're going to let this sear for two and a half minutes. And by the way, the times I'm giving you here is based on the fact that you're also using a six ounce filet that's about a half inch thick. Okay, if it's a little thicker, go ahead and give it an extra minute. And if it's a little thinner, give it a little less. Which reminds me, do not use tail pieces. Do not buy tail pieces. I don't even want you to look at the tail pieces. Okay, always ask the fishmonger for two center cut fillets, since they are so much easier to work with, and we can all use a little easier in our lives. But anyway, we'll go ahead and let that first side sear for, like I said, about two and a half minutes, at which point we'll go ahead and turn them over. And then what we'll do is sear that second side for just two minutes, at which point we're going to remove those two plates and maybe loosely cover them with foil while we build our pan sauce. And if you're thinking, this doesn't seem like enough time to cook the fish through, well, it isn't, not 100%, but we don't want it 100%. We only want it like 75, 80%, since this really finishes cooking when we put it back into our hot piccata sauce. And not to make broad assumptions, but I think you've been cooking your salmon a little too long. So you just gotta trust me on this. Okay, so we'll give that second side about two minutes. And like I said, we'll remove that two plate. And maybe we'll toss a piece of foil over it while we build this incredibly delicious and super easy sauce which is only gonna take a couple minutes. And that starts by tossing in some whole drain capers, or at least they're supposed to be fully drained. Mine had a little bit of liquid on them, which is why they're splattering all over. So do as I say, not as I just did. And before we move on, I like to take a fork and crush these a little bit. And I know we could scratch our nonstick, but we're not going to, because the fork is not touching the pan. We're just giving some of these a little bit of a press, which is gonna bring out a lot of that beautiful brininess. Okay, so we'll give those a very quick crush at which point we'll toss in a little bit of white wine, plus the juice from one lemon. And if we have a fresh lemon around that we're gonna juice, we might as well use the zest too, which as you know is where most of that lemon flavor lives. And what we'll do is give our pan a swirl or two, and then we will simply let this reduce for about a minute or so, or until it reduces by at least half. And we're just gonna go by eye, since we can always adjust this by adding a splash of water later which I'm actually going to do since I kind of over-reduced this as you're about to see. But anyway, like I said, we'll reduce that down until it looks something like this, at which point we can reduce our heat to low and then toss in a couple tablespoons of cold butter. And once the butter's in, we'll simply keep swirling the pan or stirring it with a spoon or spatula until it's just about all melted, at which point we'll grab our salmon and slide those back in, along with, of course, any accumulated juices. Oh yeah, you forget those, it's like three years bad luck. And then once the salmon's in, we will finish blending in that butter by moving the pan and or using a spoon. And since we have a spoon in our hand, we might as well spoon some of that nice hot sauce over the fish, which for me at this point I thought was a little too thick. Okay, by the time we plated this up, there wouldn't really be anything running on the plate, and we do want this to be a little bit saucy. So what we'll do is simply adjust with a tablespoon of water. And please note, we don't have to do that if we had simply reduced our liquids a little less. But the point is, you're able to adjust this no matter what happens. 
And besides maybe that little splash of water, the only other thing we'll add here is a nice big pinch of freshly chopped Italian parsley. And that's it, we can go ahead and give that one last spooning. And once we're happy with it, which at this point I was very happy with it, we can go ahead and grab that pan and turn off the heat. And we will plate up next to some Parisian potatoes and a grilled tomato. And by the way, this plate presentation is dedicated to every prep cook who worked in a large hotel in the 70s or 80s. And speaking of grilled tomatoes, if you'll excuse me, I need to fix something. There we go, that's much better. And to finish up, we'll go ahead and spoon over plenty of that amazing sauce. And thanks to the acidity from the lemon and wine, that butter's not gonna melt and separate. It's actually gonna be suspended in that liquid, or as we say in the business, emulsify. And that's what's gonna give our pan sauce that beautiful, luxurious texture. And that's it, our seven minute salmon piccata was ready to enjoy. So let me grab a fork and get into this. And basically what we've created here is a hot salad dressing, right? We have the acidity from the lemon juice and the wine, but instead of emulsifying an oil in, we're using butter, which adds another layer of richness, which is offset and elevated by those briny salty capers. So yes, I have a lot of favorite pan sauces, but this piccata sauce is right up at the top of the list. And thanks to just cooking this for a couple minutes per side, and then finishing it off in that hot sauce, we have a piece of salmon that's just barely cooked through. Okay, it's cooked, but it is not dry and chalky, which is how 90% of people that eat salmon eat salmon, which really is too bad. Because if you cook it like this, where it will still flake apart, but that meat is still moist and a little bit translucent, it is a completely different experience. In fact, if you don't like salmon, do me a favor, try this. And if you still don't like salmon, I will finally believe you. And while parsley is the classic choice here, some freshly chopped dill and or tarragon would also be amazing with this. But of course, that's up to you. I mean, you are after all the shaman of your salmon. And speaking of magical healing powers, there is something about eating a dish like this that just makes you feel better, which I can't really explain and I'm not gonna try. And despite being very light and relatively nutritious, it's very satisfying and comforting, especially when paired with the delicious, but also ridiculous Parisian potato which you do by scooping out a potato with a melon baller and then boiling the potatoes in salted water and then browning them in butter. And it is so wasteful and so time consuming. But when you're done, you get to eat potato balls. And it's been my experience that people really do like eating potato balls. So maybe I'll show you that recipe at a future date if enough people plead for it. But I'm gonna stop stealing the thunder from this salmon, which really truly was fantastic. But whether you serve this with the world's dumbest potato recipe or not, this piccata pan sauce technique is something that every cook needs in their bag of tricks, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.